What's up YouTube? Welcome back. 10 millimeter ammo test series continued. Numbers 11 through 15 are going to be really interesting. I don't think you want to miss any of them. Number 11 today is going to be the S&B XRG. This is a 130 grain hollow point copper and it's got some little serrations cut into it to make it fillet itself open. If you look down in there I'm not sure if you can actually see it. This round is traveling at an advertised velocity of 1362 on the box. Not sure what kind of a barrel they use for that, but we're going to find out how it does out of our two favorite gel test guns. The Springfield XDM Elite 3.8 inch OSP with a hollow sun red dot on it. And we also have a Colt Delta Elite 1911 5 inch with iron sights. So between these two firearms, we're going to test this ammunition for accuracy. Five rounds out of each pistol on these B8 targets. We're also going to collect the chronograph data for those shots. Then from 15 feet away, we're going to send these things sailing through gel. And we're also going to put the chronograph in front of the gel so that we can capture the actual velocity of the bullet that hits the gel. This is the same procedure we use for all of our 10 millimeter testing. So you can look back at any of these, the previous 10 that we've done, and it's all pretty much the same testing. You can get to see what each different bullet does in these two guns. It's pretty interesting. All these different rounds that we're testing, they all do a little bit different things. But so far, they've all been 10 millimeters that will pack a pretty good punch. Let's see how this solid copper does today. All right, 20 feet off that target, 15 feet off that gel, five rounds of the 130 grain S&Bs out of the Elite 3.8 inch from Springfield. Eleven ninety four. Twelve twenty seven. Twelve forty eight. Twelve thirteen. And twelve forty eight, I think again. Locked back, let's take a look. Well, I can't even remember what the red dot zeroed at anymore, but I was aiming right here, and here's the group that I got. There's one, two, three, four, five. So it is a decent group. It's got an interesting recoil. This gun handles all ammunition very well. This isn't, I would say, a harsh recoil. It's kind of a, if I could just describe it really weirdly right now, it sounds like an empty bang. Something happens, it bangs in your hand, but it feels a little hollow. It just, like, I know that sounds really weird, but it doesn't feel like your average round going off. There's just something a little bit different. It's not light, but it's still there. It's like a, I mean, it's almost like shooting a nine millimeter to tell you the truth, but it does have still, it still has recoil. I can't explain it. It's just odd. All right. The same five, same distance, same everything. Colt Delta Elite. Twelve seventy five, twelve ninety one, twelve seventy one. Twelve seventy seven. And 1268. Let's take a look. There's those numbers. And again, the recoil is different. It's not bad. It's I want to say it's almost like if you've ever shot a 30 carbine out of a revolver, how there's more bang than there is like anything else. It's just there's a lot of bang, there's a lot of boom, but it's kind of leaving something to be like, where's the rest of the recoil and all that? That's kind of what it feels like, except for just a little bit more than a 30 carbine would feel. Anyway, the group looks good. I'll definitely take that for iron sights. That's a better group. Meh. It's probably the same as I got with the red dot. Still shooting a little bit high, but one, two, three, four, and then an outlier, I'd say. So I'd call that the primary group. I mean, it might be better than the red dot group. All right, 15 feet off that gel, one round. I 
totally screwed that one up. Right as I pulled the trigger, I said to myself, that stuff shoots high, what are you doing? So since I didn't adjust my point of aim, we came into the block here. We still had a velocity capture of 1229. We came into the block. It's really not a very impressive wound channel, but then we exited the block. So let me measure that real quick. So we exited at 10 inches. I'd say we had the primary wound cavity pretty large up till about six. It started tapering down after that. So let's hit this again in the proper place. I'll do better this time. All right, let's look at that. We ended up with 1220. All right, that was much better. We had a good track here for about the same distance, I'd say. And then we tapered off and we landed. So let me walk around. We landed right at about 13 and a quarter, I'd say 13 and a half inches with a slight amount of bounce back. The bullet did open up, but to tell you the truth, I'm not super impressed by the wound channel. I mean, we got the numbers up there, You'll the velocity, the foot pounds, they are what they are, but the wound channel itself, just not super impressive. That's just my, my opinion, the turkey's opinion. You guys think, you know, whatever you think at home, I'm not trying to call good or bad ammo here, but compared to a lot of the other 10 millimeters we've seen, it's just not super, super impressive. From the top down or the corner angle, whatever you can get, they don't look that much different from top or side. So let's see what it does out of the five inch Colt Delta Elite. Let's see if that smacks it any differently. All right, 1911 style, I'm gonna try to hit it in the right place. We had 1253, let's take a look. Sorry, I forgot to show you proof of chronograph on the last couple, but we got it for this one. So we entered at a decent separation from the other one. You'll be able to see from the top, pretty much the same wound track, and we actually didn't get as deep. I'm assuming like a lot of times when we increase the velocity just a little bit with the 1911, we end up opening pedals up more with hollow points, and then that tends to slow the bullet down just a little bit, but not a huge difference here. I mean, pretty much identical, I would call it, for the most part when it comes to gel testing. This is very close out of these two firearms. Let's take a look from the top. You can see all three of them basically have the exact same initial wound channel. And then again, from the top, they look pretty much the same. They're both pedaled up, pedaled, ugh, both pedaled open. And sorry, we had to retire the old dirty tape. It was getting really dirty and nasty, but we have a new yellow tape. It'll be dirty soon. But for now, I'd say that one went 12 and a half inches. Like I said, the other one, the XDM landed at about 13 inches, maybe 13 and a half, you can call it. Um, just... Like I'm gonna say, again, not very impressive from what we've seen as far as a lot of 10 millimeter ammo. So here's the XDM Elite, and then here's the, I was almost gonna say 45, but here is the 1911 10 millimeter. It's pedaled back just a little bit more. You can barely see the difference, but it's just a little bit more of a opened cup than this one is more of a deep cup. Go ahead and turn them on their side a little bit. Go ahead and stand them on their heads a little bit. And you can basically see they are pretty much the same. So the velocities that we're getting and then the velocities on the box, the 1362, that's not exactly going together. Now they could be out of a longer barrel, of course. They could be using a six inch or more barrel and they could be, you know, that's muzzle velocity. They write a lot closer than we are. They could make a difference with something like solid copper. I'm not sure. But what we saw on paper is good accuracy. It was controllable, and I think a lot of that controllability came from this stuff isn't too hyper. So you see the foot pound numbers that we got. I'm not going to get too judgy on this ammo, but I will say it's, like I said, when we were looking at the gel blocks, it's a little bit less than ideal, in my opinion, for 10 millimeter. I want to say that this is performing pretty much like a 40 caliber or a 9 millimeter. I'm not too impressed by this. I think this should have rocked the block a lot more. We usually see when you see the increased foot pounds of some of these other bullets we've used or cartridges that throw the bullets 
the increased foot pounds generally rocks the block. Now, we do have something interesting we're gonna be doing with this ammunition, so I would check out our next video that we're gonna put out, and it's gonna be involving this stuff right here. We're gonna take one of these out, and we're actually gonna put it through a 400 Legend. So we have a 400 Legend upper that is SAMI appropriate, but we've been loading different ammunition in that to get the velocities of these handgun rounds up really, really, really fast. We're gonna do that to this round. We're gonna get it going as fast as we can. That's our next video. So that'll probably rock the block. Let's see how far the solid copper can go because if anything, I think it'll just peel its pedal backs and keep rolling, but we'll see. Another thing we've been known to do is take projectiles out and reload them right back into 10 millimeter cases. So if we can come up with a recipe and a good powder to get these things rolling faster than they come out of the box, maybe we can see the full potential of this round. But for now, I don't think SMB is loading it to its full potential. They didn't even load it to its advertised velocity unless they're cheating with a long barrel that nobody really uses for self-defense purposes. So again, not trying to get too judgy. It did perform okay. It would get the job done most likely. I would not want to get shot with it. Maybe reduced recoil is something that would be a plus in some of your favorite 10 millimeter platforms that you don't want to always rock yourself with shooting, especially maybe if you're going to have somebody else shoot the platform that's a little bit recoil sensitive. However, if you're going to go with an ammunition like this that is a little bit less hot than average, I'm going to call it less hot than average, I would definitely test this in your firearms and I would go through a couple boxes of this just to make sure that this is going to reciprocate your slide and feed every time. When you start getting funny weights and funny velocities with 10 millimeters, sometimes they have a hard time because 10 millimeter is not created equal. It's all over the map. It's from 40 caliber all the way up to almost 357, sometimes touching low end 357 velocities and foot pounds of energy. So when you're dealing with 10 millimeter, make sure it runs in your gun. If you like the ammo, test it in your gun multiple rounds in multiple magazines. That's my spiel for today. I usually don't add that to an ammo test video, but I felt it appropriate for this one today. We have plenty more ammo. We got cool tests coming up. You don't want to miss any of them. And like I said, we're going to stick this in 400 Legend and probably kick it up again in just regular 10 millimeter. Until we see you next time, stay safe, have fun, and keep shooting.